audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is where tonight, Drew? Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah. You. Yeah. Woo. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. John McRae and Vince DeFiore are both here tonight from Cake. And, uh,. True. I don't know if you remember how much we love the cake, guys. I know. We haven't seen these guys since the TV show, either. I know, but uh, we're big fans of cake, and we're glad uh, that they're here in the studio. And uh, they just got doing uh, Coachella. Yeah. That, did I pronounce that right? I always think I'm mispronouncing that. I think some, like, stuck-up people say Coachella or something, but I think we're fine with that. True. I'm hearing a little feedback on your end. Oh, really? Right I don't hear any over here. No right. feedback of my voice or what? Your voice? No, I was hearing John's voice coming. Okay, coming hold through. on. I'll fix that. All right there, buddy. How'd, uh, how'd it go this weekend? Uh, it was very good. No, not you, Drew. Oh, Who care, cares what screw you, you Adam. Did. Oh, screw you. We don't care what you did this weekend. Sorry, John. Go ahead. Uh, we need to see Drew's face. You know, it's hard to... <laughs> Hard to know who's going to talk. Um, it was it was good. You know, it's a big old uh, like polo field uh, with really short grass and uh, you know yeah, it's, it's, it's nice palm trees and short grass instead of dirt. And right. Wind, you know. And I think it helps people behave better when they're not just rolling around like pigs in the dirt. Yeah. So I think I think rock festivals uh, get sort of bad reputations because people just feel like pigs and you know. You know, want to burn things down because right. of it. Now well, they start charging eight bucks for water. The uh, port of sands are overflowing at noon, and then people just turn into animals. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's very, very civilized rock yeah. fest. Would you play uh, second night or first night? We just played last night, which was the first night. Oh, right. it was the second night tonight? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I yeah, gotta get so, yeah. there. There was a slushy stand there too. Oh, and yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah, and uh, so it went well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, it was good. Yeah. yeah. We're going to uh, hear something from uh, Cake's uh, album, Comfort Eagle, in uh, just a couple of uh, seconds. Um, Drew? Want to take a cake call to start that one? Take yeah, what kind take... of call? Yeah, take a cake, cake call. There we go. All right. Bryce? Yeah. You're 14? Hey, Adam. What's up? Not much. Hey, um, my question is for Cake. Um, I just wanted to know about one of your older songs, um, Sheep Go to Heaven. Okay, we have a problem. I cannot hear the callers at all. All right. Well, just quiet down, Drew. All right. Go ahead, Bryce. All right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, I just wanted to know about the song, uh, Sheeps Go to Heaven, Goats Go to Hell. <laughs> and uh, what's that all about and what your, what your inspiration was for that? Well, thanks for asking. Um, for one thing, I get kind of irritated when people say sheeps. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then you're <laughs> but, uh, but aside from that, um, you know, the song is sort of, um, to me, about something and it doesn't really have to be about the same thing for you but I'll, I'll just be um, sort of um, uh, vague about it and say that it's sort of about um, the way humans tend to think in, uh, in, in, a, in a binary way mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of uh, right and wrong or uh, light and dark and it, it's a sort of a shorthand but it shouldn't um, we shouldn't think that it encompasses the entirety of uh, of of what of what should be um, um, the the reality of the of the real actual situation. Does that make sense? I don't know. Are goats? Uh, why are goats bad? Well, I, that's the thing. I don't know. I mean, I wrote the song. And I was wondering why goats had to be bad. Yeah, but you know, I you know, it struck me as you were beginning that explanation, which is there's certain animals we decided we decide we like, and then there's some we decide are evil. Mm -hmm. Maybe we do that with certain cultures too. Yeah. But, I mean, there's certain insects. You know, we like ladybugs. We can't stand roaches. Although, ladybugs probably do more damage than roaches. They just, they look, yeah. a, they look a little cuter. It's, it's really arbitrary. It is arbitrary. Yeah. But I think goats uh, get the shiv yeah. in the animal world. Absolutely. Yeah. But, 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 like, a nice uh, pizza with some goat cheese and olive oil and, um, you know, maybe some portobello mushrooms is a great thing. And yet... Yep, goat. We've we've browbeaten goats for so many yeah. centuries. Goats don't get the uh, they don't get the credit they deserve. I 
I would uh, I would suggest that maybe after the show we sit around and talk about what we can do to change this. All right. <laughs> maybe you do, guys, yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. you can write a song that would uh, sort of inspire this. Maybe well, I could. Chuba, to... Chubacaba, Chubacaba goes to heaven. Right. And dog, go, dogs go to hell. The goat, yeah. the goats are okay. Right. I, yeah. I could cut some PSAs talking about uh, take a second look at goats. <laughs> goats are more uh, rugged individualists. Actually, think, maybe. maybe ag- too. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Somebody. There's a guy who's got a little farm up here in the hills, uh, uh, you know, um, and I, a long time ago I visited the farm and he's got all these goats and he's like, goats are the wave of the future. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, because you don't have to feed them very much. Right. And, yeah, they uh, need your clothes, that's why. Well, yeah. you don't have to feed them very much for the amount of output, you know, right. for, the, for the milk and whatever else they produce. So it's, uh, you know, maybe... I met him. He was running for city council, right? <laughs> yeah, he was. All right, so anyway. Vanessa? Um, hi. Hey, you're 17. What's up? Um, well, my ex-boyfriend, who I dated about a year ago, I'm having a big problem getting over him, but I have a new boyfriend, and it's, like, totally ruining that relationship. Why are you having trouble getting over this guy? I, I don't know. If I think about it, like, he was not nice to me, and he was, like, a really horrible relationship. But is that what you need? You need somebody that into true intimacy is too threatening, and this nice guy you're with now, it's sort of boring, and you have well, to have the yeah, excitement of the abuse? <laughs> I yeah, but the boring. boring boring is boring is something people feel just before depression. Mm-hmm. And depression is the response to the vulnerability of being in a real relationship. And the abuse that guy the abusive guy is not going to somehow suddenly become not abusive. I mean, your part of your obsession is that well, I've changed him or we can get back together, give him another chance. No, he's an abusive a hole and he will never change. Well, in about sixty years. It's not that he was abusive, it's just that he didn't ever pay any attention to me and like didn't, didn't you use the word abusive? Did I say abusive? I'm sorry. It's just that he didn't pay any attention to me. And, like, now my new boyfriend, he's awesome. And he's, like, so much better. And I'm just, like, I have, like, I'll go to school. And my new boyfriend doesn't go to my school. And my old boyfriend does. And, like, I have a hard time, like, seeing him. And, like, I've had things where I've gone home early because, like, seeing him and his new girlfriend really upsets me. Who broke up with who? I broke up with him. And it's been a whole year. It's been, yeah, almost, yeah, a year this month, actually. And I'm still, like... I like I have like all this crap like built up behind him, and I don't know why. Uh-oh. All right, it's not and, good. Yeah, and the new guy's not working because he's he's too attentive. I mean, he's a nice guy, right? He's a nice guy, and it's so because he's so nice. And I'm just, and I don't even know why I have this guy. I'm like hung up over him at all, and I can't figure it out. And I like I try. Well, Adam, why don't you ask the pertinent questions? <laughs> What's your sign? <laughs> no, <laughs> <come> what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, and he's he's a sad. Oh. No, l- listen. What, what about your dad? What kind of guy was oh, he? Oh, this is an interesting story. Um, my dad been in and out of jail. He's right now in an NA program for a meth addiction. Mm-hmm. All right, so yeah. he's he's sort of mistreated you and was unavailable. Yeah, and so that becomes your model for what's attractive. And you you've got to you, listen. You need to go to some Al-Anon and get used to dealing with having an addict father because you you've been affected by this and you've done nothing to repair that. Yeah. All right, babe. Okay, you're going to keep obsessing about a holes if you don't if you don't uh, do something to grow through this. How do you get to Al Anon? Uh, you use your car. Just, you just get <laughs> a phone book. Call call Alcoholics Anonymous. Ask for an Al Anon referral. They'll even come pick you up. They will. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> you should that's, go. <laughs> that's a tough gig driving the Al Anon van. <laughs> I go to losers' houses. Parents were addicts and pick them up. And I don't drive them home though. I just drop them off. Yeah. Drew, really? Will they come pick you up? Well, it's not that they have a van. It's like people that are going to Al-Anon will swing by and get you and take you home. It's not a bad place to get laid. Oh, God. No, I mean it. I, I My friends used to tell me about the uh, CA meetings, the Cocaine Anonymous meetings, yeah. like on the west side in Hollywood, like West L.A. CA meetings. Just tons of super hot, needy, skinny, oh. 25-year-old chicks who are just looking for a life preserver. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good place to be a sexual predator. For yeah, sure. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well said. We had to cruise some of those places. Yeah, Adam, did you hear what he said? Yeah, yeah. Was it? Yeah. Okay. No, he was agreeing with me. Yeah, all right, yeah. That's the way okay. I read it. Good times. Yeah, just a manly guy, you know. Right. Yeah, a predator, yeah, good. <laughs> Patricia? Manly predator. Yeah. Hey, that was a good movie. Patricia, you're 29. Yes, hi, guys. Hey. Um, I'm making my calling because I was... I heard a caller. She was 19. Boyfriend left her pregnant. 
you guys said no adoption. She said no. She's doing anything for a baby. Yada, yada, yada. Right. I gave up a child for adoption two years ago. Mm-hmm. And it was an open adoption. Me and my boyfriend decided, because I already had one child when we met. Right. We decided for financial reasons we couldn't deal with it. So we gave him up for an open adoption. That means I get photographs. I get updates. I get to know how the child's doing. Hey, if, the kid, if the kid invents something, are you in for a taste? No. Oh, okay. But the, the point so is, like though, that you, in, uh, you, you did this. You did it on behalf of the child. It feels good to know that they're get, he's getting reared by loving parents. Right. And you were not a position. To, yeah. Huh? And you were I not a position to be that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I even sat down and met them. Well, how does how does it work, though? How often do you see your child? I don't get to see him. They just send photos. They and send photos later, twice and, a year. And and does the and does the child know that you're around, or how does that work? Well, he's only two, so. But but one day. Yeah, they will. They'll they're going to tell him that I, he's adopted. I'm adopted per a child myself. Interesting. Huh. So well, you know, and I, I I was just getting my life back together after being an alcoholic. I already had one child. I just couldn't right. do another. Well, no, you should, listen, you should be applauded. There should be, like, trophies given out. <laughs> uh, uh, really. I mean, there, there should be some tremendous support for the sacrifice you make on behalf of the child. Yeah, I think well, it's I, wonderful. I, I thought it was the best thing. And I just it was. To, I just want to say to any girl that's out there pregnant and thinks that she can get the boyfriend back, it's she might come back, but it's temporarily. It'll never work out because if he leaves, when he finds out you're pregnant, he doesn't want to be responsible in the first place. Hmm. All right, Patricia, thanks. All right, thank you. Guys. You're a real hero. If um, if you count, you know, use giving away your kids as a criteria for hero. But I think I'd like to, I would like to look into this open adoption when I have kids, too. Sort of like people have horses, don't keep them in their living room, do they? You know what I mean? What the hell just, are you talking about? Well, here's what I'm saying. The horse stays at a stable, right? Yeah. They feed it, they groom it, they take care of it, they look after it. Once a week, you swing on by, you ride it around for a little while, and then it goes back to the stable where you know it's safe and it's being na- nurtured. You know, it's being taken care of. I, I could sort of think about this with a kid, too. Yeah. I mean, a little more open than the pictures twice a year. What? Promise me something. What's that? You will not have children. Do you say children or horse? <laughs> you said kids? <laughs> All right. Well, that's what child care and boarding schools are for. Oh, is that what boarding schools yeah. for? Yeah. yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Dylan? Yeah. You're 14? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I have some questions for Cake. Mm-hmm. Um, I was wondering um, when they would be back in Tucson. Um, okay, that's a good question. Um, you know, weren't we this, just there a little while ago or not? Uh, um, I'm not sure. I haven't been going to many concerts recently, so... Yeah, you're too young, probably, uh, to have gone to too many concerts. Tucson's where that great hotel is, right? Yeah, yeah, we've stayed there. Yeah, the Arizona well, yeah, I mean, the, uh, well, there's a um, venue that's in an old hotel in downtown Tucson. The, ho- the Hotel Congress? That's it. Yeah, oh, really? it's a historic uh, hotel. But, um, but yeah, you know, um, I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I, You know, I, well, thanks for the suggestion. Are you going to show up if we do play there? Uh most definitely. I went to one of your concerts in Tucson a few years ago. Okay. At Rialto, and that was great. Wow. Dylan, you're 14. How old were you when you went a few years ago? I don't know, like 11. Jeez. Wow. My whole family is a big cake fan, so. Wow. It's one big cake fan that's family. Cool. Yeah. That's Well, that's you know what? Uh, we appreciate it, and we try to make music that's scientifically designed for the whole family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and dead people, too. Yeah. Not not binary. <laughs> yeah. Not binary. Well, we try to keep uh, lots of different uh, <laughs> options open, but thank you very much for the call. Yeah, and I was also wondering, where do you get the names for your CDs? Because... I mean, no offense, they seem kind of random to me, but really? I'm sure they're not. I'm, I'm sorry you think that. <laughs> He's 14, dog. Give him a break. <laughs> they're chosen from a big, long list of other random names. Yeah. yeah. They're not random, though. though. They're very serious. The references to the Aeneid. Ra- That's right. <laughs> R- random isn't necessarily a put-down, by the way. Well, you know, random to the conscious mind is... is uh, <laughs> 
is uh, it's like saying you're lucky or something, right? Well, the subconscious is a lot bigger than the conscious mind. Is what I'm saying. The, right. The, the, the subconscious is a big ocean, and the conscious mind is a is a peanut. Right. So, so it would be random to the conscious mind, but to the subconscious mind, almost nothing is random. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Right. So either way, it's your subconscious mind, <laughs> so you get full credit, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a win-win situation. That's right. All right, hey, Drew, why don't we hear something from Kate? That's what I thought was coming here. All right, this is uh, off the CD, Comfort Eagle, and uh, this one is Comfort Eagle. That is Comfort Eagle off of Comfort Eagle from Cake, who is in the studio with us tonight. John and Vince are both here from the band, and Drew is in uh, North Carolina. That's right. I'm at uh, 98.7 The Zone. Yeah. Greensboro. Yeah. Greensboro, Winston, Salem, High Point. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know about Greensboro and Salem, but uh, I've always been a big High Point fan, so I'm glad, <laughs> glad they're back on the, in the mix. Yeah. Uh, all right, Drew, let's take one more call before we go to break. Oh, cool. Say? All right, hold on. Hold on. I need a quick one. No. Here you go. No, well, excruciatingly you got one. long one. Zach? Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. What's up? Uh, I just want to know which way of taking marijuana was most effective as far as potency. Hmm. Well, clearly, whatever you've been doing, it's been quite potent enough. I like the way you said potency. Pot- potency. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <was> cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zach, well, uh, <laughs> you, you found the formula. Yeah, it clearly, whatever you've been doing, it's uh, been quite effective. But uh, it turns out if you take it orally, you actually get the highest doses going in your system. Oh, like and so, tea. well, I don't know about tea. It's interesting because I, I don't know how, I, I guess you could do it with tea. I don't know how much you drink or, or take of it. Brownies are most people what they do for oral. Oral is very difficult to control because it takes 30 minutes or so for it to get in your system. Yeah, yeah. And you've already eaten God knows how much. And that's how people get these sometimes very intense hallucinogenic experience and panic attacks and uh, blackout. And have, have even heard of seizures. Yeah. I've always been a fan of the rectal route as far as marijuana went. Yeah. Well, everything for you, Adam, goes up the keister, doesn't it? Eventually, Be yeah. fair, yeah. <laughs> the, the Aztecs did that, Adam. You know that? Did they? Yeah, in ritual, religious ceremonies. With uh, with weed or with, uh, with peyote or uh, what were they using? Yeah, probably peyote and also grain beverage. It's like a, a similar, something similar to beer. Dumping it up the ass, Yeah, huh? absolutely. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's like, you know, sort of hieroglyphic looking <laughs> carvings on the sides of their temples of people with... Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I never got them a bags. I never, yeah. got, I never got that wheel on my view master. But <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe there's an, like an adult section that my folks <laughs> would let me go into. <laughs> Slightly race your view master wheels. Well, so uh, I got a question, though. I mean, what about what marijuana being uh, uh, the stimulating uh, female hormones uh, in, in men? Is that true, yes. Drew? Yes. Oh, uh, absolutely. That's true. So we should tell the, about the potency. Uh, the po- potency? I, I, what I do, that's the only way I can get their attention is tell them their penis won't get hard. Yeah. And uh, it, boobs. It, boobs. they'll get boobs. That's right. It, particularly in the 13 to 15 year old age group when the adrenal glands are putting out estrogen-like hormones and uh, the the, uh, marijuana further suppresses testosterone and increases those estrogen-like effects. So while while your body and your brain are still still developing, better to lay off. Wait till you're 18 when your brain, at least until your brain is finished well, developing. Well, actually, there actually is evidence that it can delay the development or the growth of the right frontal lobe of your brain and that's the part of your brain you're using to negotiate development. That, yeah. That's where all that subconscious stuff you're talking about, Yeah, that's where all that happens. That intersubjective subconscious experience of our interpersonal lives is the right frontal lobe. It's your friggin' soul in there. Yeah. yeah that's hey, true. Hey, so Zach. That's right. Bad news. That's yeah. Right. Zach, why don't you ease up on the weed for a few years? That's what we're saying, all right? All right. Well, no, you don't no, have to do that. The yeah, it's be a little hard. You just, All right. Well, listen, Zach. You kind of have to because it really, it really makes you no moron. Eventually. And, yeah. Well, Zach is like the eventually is upon him. I think. Right. And Zach, you, you know, you don't it. work at a Derwiner Schnitzel your whole life, do you? No, I don't even like getting drunk. I just like getting stoned all the time. New. No. New. No. Yeah. All right. We understand the part where you like pot, Zach. We're we're asking you if you could curtail it a little bit and not smoke as much. All right. There's an old uh, Brazilian saying uh, that goes: hardworking parents, uh, bourgeois children, degenerate grandchildren. Ooh! Wow. It's a nice uh, one. It's beautiful. Uh, very beautiful. I guess. Uh, I guess, I'm guessing Zach is the uh, grandchild. <laughs> All right. Cake is uh, in the studio tonight. John and Vince are both here from the band. 
We will uh, take a little break and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there in uh, Salem, Greensboro, Greensboro, Winston, Raleigh, Durham, High all that good stuff. Yeah. The research triangle. Yeah. Got a 100,000 yeah. watt flamethrower here, Adam. Yeah. We're right. playing there, by the way, next month. Cool. Yeah, you should, come, you should stay there. <laughs> and go to our show. <laughs> yeah, they're going to, what, 22nd? I think the 22nd. In May? Yeah. Where? Where? Uh, I don't know the venue, but it's, uh, the, it's that, it's, um... In it's, Greensboro? No, 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 it's uh, the other one, uh, Winston-Salem, or... Yeah. Or maybe it's Raleigh-Durham? Yeah, oh, man. I, I need it in front of me on a piece of paper, but it's not, so... But... May 22nd. Yeah. Yeah, Drew, you just, what, what do you got to kill, like a month? <laughs> Here? Yeah, yeah you can hang fun. there. Yeah, sure. It's cool here. Yeah, you're not you're not so big that you got to skate out on the first uh, first class seven 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 leaving the place. Are we'll, you? We'll, we'll hang out we'll, after the show. <laughs> yeah, I'll wait for that. Okay. North Carolina's first in flight. All right, we will uh, get back to. By phone. the way, I I came in through some thunderstorms today. It was one of those Roberto <laughs> Clemente experiences and praying to God and all that. Oh my God! Were you on a puddle jumper? It, they don't really have those so much anymore. It was it was a regional jet, but. Regional jets fly into stuff they shouldn't fly into. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The yeah. other little pole jumpers wouldn't go to this stuff, and they were, they were being just hammered by, by thunderstorms. Well, you're safe, and that's yes. what's important, Drew. Thank you, Adam. Now, be quiet. Cake is our uh, guest tonight. Joan is on uh, line four here. She's 17. Joan? Hey. Hey. Um, what's up? What's happening? Um, basically, I have two parents, obviously, and they used to both... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they used to both use um, Vicodin and Oxycontin. Right. And my dad was seeing a psychiatrist who decided that uh, they were taking enough to kill them every day. Right. And so I thought they both should go to rehab, but my dad was the only one who ended up going. Okay. And he's come out. I mean, we spent like $30,000 on rehab. And he comes back and he's, you know, still using. Oh. And he forces my mom to use it because he believes that she he likes her better. Oh boy! When she's on it, and <laughs> she boy, sure. Like, hold on, are you sure he forces your mom to do it? He doesn't. He physically force her, but he tells her he likes her better when she's on it. It's not an uncommon codependent enabling posture to yeah, really okay. encourage another person to use drugs because they're easier to deal with or they're happier. They'll sort of use a lot of nonsense like that as a reason for urging people into their disease. Yeah, and my dad's really smart, and so he's like, he can be really sneaky about it. And Joan, this is, this is awful. You understand, this is the same thing as heroin addiction, Oxycontin, Vicodin. These are powerful, powerful opiates. Yeah. And she, both of them have got to go to treatment, and you too need to participate in that. You need to go to Somalatine yeah, or Al-Anon. I know I have depression, but I don't know what... Well, of course. I've you're never, you're like, living... I'm not really that close with my parents, and I don't know what to do, what, how to get my, you know, help my parents. No, my dad won't stop. Tell them that life is pain. <laughs> you know, and you can't uh, have growth without uh, without pain. So they're just frozen in a probably a an adolescent emotional state, wouldn't you say, Drew? Well, but, that that is in fact one of the phenomenon that goes on so frequently in drug addictions. You start using early on in your life, and you don't actually develop. The brain doesn't grow through those periods when you normally would be learning new coping strategies. Instead, you're just relying on drugs to manage your affect. But the other thing about opiates is just the biology of the grip it has the brain in is so incredible. Incredibly powerful. It's why people die of this disease routinely. It's more powerful than the survival drive itself. And the brain actually confuses survival and the drive to use the drug. So the, all you can do, Jonah, is really take care of yourself and to keep uh, creating consequences for their use. And I know that's kind of a vague thing to say. But wherever you can to sort of push up against what they're doing and, and create a consequence. But in the meantime, go to Alateen, al just go or get a therapist for yourself. You have to take care of yourself. Your parents have money? Yeah. They get a therapist. Well, they get, get a you therapist. a therapist? I don't, I don't think so. They don't think it's my problem. They think I'm supposed to, you know... They, All right. <sighs> uh, but, Joan, here's what you got to do. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Younger brother. Uh, that sucks. Here's what you need to do. <clears throat> Are you a decent student? Yeah. You're going to go to college one day? Yes. 
Not junior college, which no is confusing way. because there's the word college in it when it's really not. No. You need to get your grades up, participate at school, get involved with your friends and whatever kind of activities are going on outside of the house, and just go far away to some college one day. It's going to be real hard for you to cure your parents. Yeah, they want me to live at home for college. No, no, don't do that. No. No, no, no. You're part of the mix they need in order to maintain their disease. They, they Together, they, they know that it's uh, going to torch out pretty quick by themselves. Yeah. Is it a good idea for my dad to move out? Because that's what my mom's trying to make him do. Doesn't sound like a bad idea. <sighs> yeah. I, I can't tell you specifically what's good and not good, except for you need to take care of yourself. That's essential. Beyond how they manage the, their disease, it, it's hard to say. Couldn't they just uh, tent the house like it was going to be <laughs> fumigated and drop some therapists in through the chimney? Yeah, that be a good idea? Aerosolized, a good idea. aerosolized therapist. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, therapist canisters that the SWAT yeah. team could fire through the if, window. If we lived under a benevolent dictator, that like could myself? happen. Like myself? Yeah, that could happen. Oh, it's gonna. <laughs> I, 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 let me tell you, I am benevolent, but I uh, off comes the velvet glove to expose the iron fist of the troublemakers. <laughs> like the folks that call 911 more than three times a year. Yeah. I got a lot of plans. A lot of plans, gentlemen. You can be you can be with me or you can be against me, but I'm gonna need to know before the night is over. <laughs> Kayla? Hi. You're uh seventeen, what's up? Okay, I have to I wanna gamble. What? You wanna gamble on uh, Kayla voice. just up the based voice. on her voice? Yeah. Okay. Well let's see what her problem is. You've had sex with twenty four guys. Yeah. And you wanna know if you're addicted to sex. Yeah, it's like I can't say now. For yeah. some reason, it's like every guy I come across, they're like, do you want to do something? And I'm like, okay, and I'll do it. Okay, hold on. Drew, you, you serious about your gambling? Sure. Okay, you got your dollar out over there in uh, North Carolina? Yeah, it's sitting right here on the table. Seriously, get it out. Seriously. Seriously, dude. Hey, <laughs> hey, bro. I'm, ser I'm hey, bro. serious, man. Hey, bro. Seriously, now. I uh, I don't use well, the word bro too often, but when I do, it's just so people know I'm serious. You notice you did the A sound, bruh. You did bro at the end, bruh. Yeah. That's my favorite. I like when the dudes pull the other dude out of the trouble and, and they give him the serious bro. Bro, this dude plays lacrosse. He will kick your ass, bro. You are effed up, bro. Now back off. All right, bros, get the money out. I don't, I don't think no I have dollars? any ones. I, let me see. Sir, no ones? I don't. I don't have any ones. Can I borrow a dollar from you, please? Out in front of the guys, will you? God. Whoa, hey, Vince bro. has got a dollar. Got a dollar. Vince got to have a couple of bucks. Okay. Well, he's got to represent the band with okay. two. Vince Come on. a buck, too. <laughs> 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 right. The rest of the keep it <laughs> That's <dollar>. good. <laughs> well, it's, you guys will catch up to each other on the road. We may not see you for another three that, years. I thought that you <laughs> acted like you liked me, but... <laughs> It was just show business. Well, if Vince didn't come up with it, I would have. You know, we would have worked something out. All right, well, Bruh. whatever. Bruh. All right, Drew, you yeah. go. You go first. Now, what we're gambling on is uh, Kayla's past. She's okay. seventeen. Yeah. She's had sex with twenty-four guys. Drew heard her voice and uh, doesn't trust it. Who's kicking a bag down there? Sorry, my fault. Jesus so Christ. So I'm, I'm, I'll relax. I'm getting something happened between like around 8 to 10, and I, I'm not thinking it's sexual abuse so much as she she can't assert herself. She's a victim. She dissociates. It's like some physical abuse in that age group. Alcoholic dad, physical abuse. Alcohol, okay. So 8 to 10. Physical abuse, uh, alky dad. Age 8 to 10. 8 to 10. Because you didn't get the little, you didn't get that toddler voice. Right. Like we get that voice that's like four years old sometimes, yeah. and that wasn't yeah. that wasn't the four year old uh, voice there. Right. All right, alcoholic dad. All right, Vince, you want to you want to venture? Sure, yeah. Uh, very cool. The cool girl on the block, and uh, uh, had sex at an early age with uh, some neighborhood kids, and uh, she wants to keep on uh, having experiences like that so she can uh, feel like she's on top of the situation. So, so you say? How old? Yeah, how old was she when she had sex? Too early. Thirteen. Yeah. Is that acceptable, Drew? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're saying no it's no, right, but no, it's acceptable. no wholesale abuse, just uh, one of the neighbors got hold of her when she was a little bit too young. Yeah, just good time gal. Okay. I think too young. John? I think this is cruel. Um, <laughs> this is really wrong. No, we're doing it to illustrate a point. <laughs> okay. 
that the we point that, is, that listen, we're so the, smart and we can no. Just the, tell. The, the the point is what you get from these people when yeah. you say when you get to the point where they tell you what happened and they go, but that has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Our point is it has so much to do with it. It's left such an imprint on you. We can predict what it is just in the few first few seconds of talking well, to you. What we're doing is we're getting pissed at these parents or whoever the, whoever made that that mistake. Right. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Well, I, I guess I can do that. Um, uh, I, I would say that the, the, I, I think I agree. I think it's probably uh, sometime early. Uh, uh, I don't know. I would say maybe earlier than that than what you ventured. I would say like Good. five or something. Good, right? And what sexual abuse? Yeah, I would say sexual abuse and alcohol, alcoholic father. All Good right. Bet. All right. I'm gonna go uh, sexual abuse uh, stepdad. Uh, real dad uh, out of the picture. Can I change to stepdad? Step is always <laughs> oh the smart money, so he's yeah. on the stepdad. <laughs> All right, let's uh, talk to uh, Kayla. Kayla. Yeah. All right. What's the what's the past like? Okay. Um, my parents are still married. <sighs> okay, I still live with both of them. Um, stepdad still got you though, right? I don't have stepdad. <laughs> oh. <that. laughs> <laughs> well, all right, uh, technicality. Okay, um, I started having sex when I turned 16. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's see here. It wasn't with the neighborhood guys mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Father uh, unavailable, aloof? Um, we don't get along. Yeah. At Is all. Is he a drinker? Um, just, he's just physically and emotionally abusive. Ooh. Okay, that was my bet. Yeah. That was my bourbon. What, how, was he, how old were you when he first started really getting into that? Um, probably about 11. Okay, that, right. that's what I heard. You he said 8 to 10, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's solid. Eleven. And, uh, what, what she's doing, what she's doing, is a real characteristic thing of kids that have been sex physically abused, is that sex becomes a way of managing affect, and she has a post-traumatic stress disturbance whereby. Her expectation of the interaction with everybody is going to be that that of dissociation, where she sort of seeks to, seeks to exist. So when people come to exploit her, she just dissociates. She's not there, and she says, "Okay," well, and so off I'm she not goes. Even sexually attracted to guys. That's the point. You, you're you're you under the care. you're under the sway of their impulse. Whatever they want you to do, you're just doing it, just because you're used to having been victimized. You were used to dissociating when your dad went nuts on you. You yeah. got used to expecting that from any interaction, particularly with men. And now that's just who you are. You're this victim. And you got to do something about that, Kayla. You, you really need to. Well, see, it's like usually like when I party and stuff like that, I'll get like really messed up because I do a lot of stuff. Oh, uh, well. It's like, you know. Well, that makes it entirely different. Then. Oh, we didn't know. We didn't know since yeah. you're drinking uh, hard lemonade. <laughs> well, we see, thought you know, like, I mean, I'll do like harsh drugs, you know, and like groups of guys will be like, well, let's go in the bedroom and mess around. And I'll go in there and I'll like. You know, right. so like you well, know, we're up. we're asking you not to do it. That, you know well, what see, I mean? It's not that easy. It's like I can't. Saying now, yeah, but uh, I'm saying that in order, this is this is what we were talking about earlier in terms of the complexity, of the right frontal lobe of the brain. You actually have to grow that piece of the brain in order to get out of this cycle of reenacting these traumatic experiences every time you have an interpersonal experience with a male. There's a piece of your brain that hasn't grown yet because of having been arrested by the victimizing behavior of your dad. You've, and that this is really requires treatment. It requires it. So she's got to get or, some therapy or, or something, or at least, yeah. or at least stop stop using whatever the hard drugs right. are, so that Good your point. brain brain can grow, grow the for, grow the frontal lobe, please. Right. All right, uh, Drew, you won won the bet, I believe. But you can't Thank get you. the money though yeah. because it's here. Rough. And I expect it to be there tomorrow night when I arrive. Well, we'll see, Jessica. Yeah. Hey. Twenty five. Yeah. Hi. How are you? Good. Anal sex question. Yeah. Last Fantastic. Night, um, Fantastic. <laughs> Last night we were having. We're gonna a break though, don't we? I'm oh, sorry? shut up! Let her ask a question. <laughs> Who's there? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Okay, last night we were having anal sex, and I mean there was like no pain whatsoever. But he pulled out for a second, all of a sudden there was just blood. Right. Every, like you know, a lot of blood, and it bled for a while. But I didn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was for me, and if I have like something Run, wrong. Boy. Inside, he broke her hemorrhoid. What? Where this guy to finishing school? <laughs> Sir Walter Raleigh behind her. I broke her hemorrhoid. Maybe you're eating beets. No, it was no, no, no. This is blood. This is not. This no, would not was, be a surprising. Was there, was, there was no. Sh I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> God. Drew, where did she say she went? To, where did she go to finishing? Did she answer that? 
All right, hang on a second I, there, Jessica. I just don't, I don't understand <laughs> anal sex. Why not? Because don't. there's 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 um you know sitting on a toilet you know yeah. which serves the same purpose you know <laughs> like why not just sit on the toilet and read a uh, good read the news at the same time you know why spend the time having sex right doing the same thing that you feel when you're on the toilet. I just, <gasps> You know what I mean? Right. Because if you don't get that experience enough, you know, (laughs) just every day. It'd be nice if you could train yourself so that you could suck a little duke back in there, like when people hang a loogie and then suck it back up in their mouth. That'd be nice. Hey, you do it. It ends up being like when a kid eats a popsicle, you know? (laughs) You know, once in a while they'll do that (laughs) thing. I'm not talking about 100. I mean, like. 75. Uh, there's a lot of things in this world. I hope that your dad is not listening to the show. <laughs> oh, he doesn't right. even know when the show's on. Okay, I'm going to call him. Hey, down. Dad, you're big puss. I'm going to kick your pussy ass next time I see you. All right, old man? I guarantee you. Not only did he not hear that, but no one will tell him about it either. We'll take a little break. Cake is here. We'll get back with uh, Jessica and uh, find out what's wrong with her rectum after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That is uh, Drew in uh, North Carolina tonight. Cake is our guest. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. I got some dates for uh, Cake. The uh, 18th, they're going to be in Birmingham, Alabama, and in Richmond, Virginia on the 19th, the 20th. They're going to be at uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, then Winston, Salem, North Carolina, and then in. Nashville, Tennessee, on the 23rd of May. So, uh, all you cake fans, there you go. Those are some uh, very uh, new and recent dates where you can find them. Jessica? Yeah. So, you're 25. Yeah. And uh, you're having a little anal sex last night. Yeah. And uh, there was some blood. Yeah. Um, He also has an ampling in his penis. Uh oh! You didn't tell us that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why didn't you say that in the beginning? Now, how's the ampling go? Um, it's straight through the head. Really? Yeah. Across like a barbell, across. Yeah. Across. Rock, like rock and roll. Left to right, not up and down, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah. That might have something to do with that. I don't know. Hey, oh. uh, <laughs> let me tell you, I don't know if you've married this guy or not, but uh, this is a keeper, Jessica. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You hang on to this this <laughs> fellow with both hands. You never let him go. Well, he wanted to talk to you, actually. I talked to you before. Right. But um, he works at a video store that has lots of Minka videos. Hold on a second. I am shocked that he works at a video store. (laughs) Drew, you must be flabbergasted as well. Who is number one? They have a lot of Minka videos, though? Yeah. 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 She's the number one Asian big boob queen. That's right. Big big fan of hers. (laughs) Number one? Yeah. I got a handful of them myself, though, so I'm pretty good. Oh, you should still head down there, though. Um, Okay, so he has... The ampling through it. Right. I don't know if he maybe. Yeah. They, he does. He through it or. He's not able now. Can't you feel that thing going in you? I mean, isn't that a kind of disaster? That ampling thing. Ouch! No, not at all. Why? Why not at all? Seems like there would be a factor. <laughs> uh, it's quite pleasurable, actually. But it it has to at least be a factor. I mean, you must feel it, right? Oh yeah, you can feel it. Right, and it's 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 equivalent of basically taking two round things about the size of a pea, made out of uh, like stainless steel, and sticking them on each end or each side of the head of your penis. Right? Yeah. Okay. Good times. <laughs> All right. So uh, no condom, right? No. Okay. Well, well that actually could have done. I, it. I'm I'm su- I'm surprised that there aren't more episodes like this. Uh, yes, your boyfriend's right. He can actually cause a hemorrhoid to rupture. He can tear, cause a fissure. He can cause colitis. You, maybe you have inflammatory bowel disease, and this is the first manifestation. There's all kinds of things that can sort of come out this way, as it were. Uh, and you need to see a gastroenterologist or at least an internist to get this evaluated more for, thoroughly. There can be polyps. There can be tumors. There's all kinds of things that can cause bleeding. And there's also all sorts of injuries that can cause, that can occur to that area. You can start getting stenosis of the anal canal, which is a real awful thing. Now I haven't so, bled at all today. It was just yes, last but, but night. having bled is all you need to. That, that require one drop of blood requires a visit to the doctor. Period. Well, what about it's not because you're not continuing to bleed out, uh-huh. but one drop is enough to say you've got to go. Well, but Drew, if, if somebody <laughs> took uh, 
you know, basically a uh, mop handle and uh, <laughs> taped some BBs to the end of it and violated you. Wouldn't you expect would a little blood? I mean, you wouldn't say, oh, that's cancer. No, 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 that's right. But but it also can stimulate other problems, is what I'm saying. You can't say for sure it's just a hemorrhoid. Maybe it's a tear. Maybe it's a fissure. Maybe it's a, I mean, all kinds of stuff can occur. Mm-hmm. Can we go to the next call, please? Well, can I ask you something else really fast, Dr. Drew? Yeah, um, I know maybe. somebody that eats poop. Eats poop. Next caller! <laughs> yeah, please. Right? Does he work at a video store, too? <laughs> yes. Um, no, actually, he comes in a lot, and that's where they do this at. Well, we had a dog right. that ate poop. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually eats quite a bit of crap. How oh, nice. so much? Uh, um, somebody, hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, somebody will, like, poop on a plate, and he'll take it with spoon and just start shoving it in his mouth. Oh, my God. And really? Different people. Next caller! There's a name <laughs> yeah. for that. It's called coprophagia. Right. Wow, with chocolate sauce What does he get out of it, just, just other than the reputation? Up. Well, hepatitis. And hepatitis. He's really and, uh, doing it. He's, uh, yeah, mental in the head, but right. he, for our pure factor of fun, I mean, he just sits there and eats it. But it, Well, hold on a second, Drew. You've oh. heard me say this many times on the show. It takes all kinds. <laughs> it really does. So who are we to judge? Drew, which would you rather do if you if you you have to choose one of these two options or you get killed immediately? You either have to have your left hand pinky finger painlessly removed, or um, <laughs> eat a randomly chosen from the population um, turd, uh, at least half a cup worth of turd? human human fecal matter. I right. can just have my little finger. Be done with <laughs> really? it. All right. Yeah. But All right. Could you make a meatloaf? Uh, yeah, you can get sick from eating poo, right, Drew? Oh yeah, <laughs> you can. The oral, the oral fecal route. That's why you wash your hands every time you go to the bathroom. The oral fecal route of disease transmission worldwide is probably the most significant source of disease transmission. Next Corporal time you go Fager. to a, next time you go to a restaurant, keep that in mind. Right. Right. Hmm. You don't know what the like things going on. other than hepatitis and and things like that. Just like something in a, a normal poop with someone who doesn't have hepatitis C, you can get something from it. Drew, say that again. I missed you, it. Can you get a disease if someone doesn't have a disease? Do you know no. what I'm saying? No, no. Okay. I mean, could but you could get sick, couldn't you? I mean, I don't have anything. Could you eat my poo? I would vomit. Right. Yeah, I don't know, know that I'd get a disease person. All right. Unless, all right. Okay, so well, that's that's smoothies so bad. for everyone. Good times. Good times. It takes all kinds. Coprophagia. Right. Nice word, though. We're going to take ourselves a little break. John and Vince are both here from uh, Cake. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Joshua, 17. He wants to know if there's anything dangerous about dextromethorphan. And uh, we'll tell him all about that after this. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Drew in North Carolina. Yeah. John and Vince are both here from Cake. Good to see those guys again. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Drew. Yep. Uh, Vince had a question during the commercial, which right. uh, he was curious about. He could ask. Yeah, just wondering how many calories are left in a piece of poo. Uh, you know, compared to like if there's 500 calories yeah. going in, how many come yeah. out? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. It's mostly bulk and fat, so hard to say. Okay, maybe half? Mm, less than that, I less would Less than think. half. And wh- yeah. what about people, Drew, that have faster metabolisms? Let's say the people who eat whatever they want never gain an ounce. That has more to do with how they use it, not how they absorb it. Right, but... Would it be safe to say in those people there would be more calories passed through them or it would be the same as a person who was overweight and didn't eat that many calories? I would say it would be the same because, again, it's not the issue of absorption. It's the issue of what happens to it after it's been absorbed. Right. Well, let's uh, let's let's look into that, <laughs> shall we? Absorption happens first, yeah. 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 So, um... Yeah, that's gross. So anyway, let's go away from the <laughs> All right. fecal matter. Let's go away Move just, away, just yeah. for one call, though. All right. Joshua? Uh, yeah. All right. So you want to know about uh, dextro, uh, dextro yeah. Ma- methorthan? Yeah. What about what it? About it? I, I, uh, I got into it, like, um, quite a while back. I, I tried it, and I kept telling myself I'm not addicted. And I'm a guy that knows when I'm addicted to something. Right. Well, you're addicted uh, to pot, right? Huh? You're addicted to pot, though. I 
I started smoking pot like a month ago. Mm. So I don't know if I'm addicted. I'd say so. Okay. Yeah. But, um, uh, it's, it's hard to say what will happen with dextromethorphan. I've never seen addiction. I doubt there is addiction, though I've been surprised by other things. Like, I didn't think there'd be addiction to GHB, but I've definitely seen that. And it is hallucinogenic, and so as such, it shares many of the properties we would expect of other hallucinogenics in that it probably is a neurotoxin. And we'll probably see disruption of mood, panic attacks, memory problems, the kinds of things we see from other hallucinogens. All right, there, buddy. Good times. <laughs> All right. All right. And, you know... Uh, Brain damage, I'm talking about. Joshua, at 17, you saying you're a pretty good judge of what you're addicted to yeah. is, is probably false because uh, it you really don't know that at 17. I mean, you may not well, know that but, at but 27. You know what is, no, oh, you know well, what? I, I know I that's not necessarily true. A, a lot of people who are addicts... Uh, who are honest with themselves can can say that that you know I've got momentum with this and I'm addicted and so what I'm going with it. Well, I know a, a lot of people can say that at, at 17, yeah. But also for most people who end up getting strung out on whatever, wouldn't say they were at 17. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's true. Okay, all right, Joshua. So uh, why don't you uh, give your brain a little rest? Um, I had another question. All right. Mm -hmm. Is there any way I can get rid of the side effects that I'm starting to notice now? Which are? Um, sometimes, like, it didn't start until I really got into this. I, uh, I wake up and I can't move. Okay. Like, my whole body's numb. Okay, well, those are, ba those are basically a type of night terror. And, um, and that is, can be a seizure disorder. So I would suggest you see a doctor about this. All this right. may be the beginning of something. You may flop down and have a seizure while you're trying to drive or doing something where you could hurt yourself. Okay. Also, your sleep could be disrupted more globally. They may want to do a sleep study on you. They, maybe you're getting depressed or that sort of thing from the disruption of the chemistry in your brain. And this night terror is just part of that sleep chemistry disruption you're getting. All right. All right. So uh, what should you do? Just see a doctor? He's got to see someone talk about it. Yep. All right. You got the it's next call figured out? Bad news. Jonathan? Yo. You're 15. What's up? Yeah, my uh, question's for Cake. Here they are. And, uh, Adam, I know your uh, answers to uh, veal venison and uh, the uh, vining rod. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but listen, here, hold on a second. We were, uh, Drew, are you monkeying around with something in there? Mm -hmm. All right, easy, buddy. I'm hearing something going on. Uh, we just for fun, I don't know how I stumbled onto it. Oh, I do. I was talking to a stripper uh, in Vegas about uh, four or five days ago, and uh, she was telling me how she doesn't eat uh, veal because uh, she can't stand the uh, thought of those little lambs being kept in those cages. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that's one day I'm going to do a book on uh, what strippers have uh, told me. And by the way, what, uh, what they would do. Uh, if they caught up to Bin Laden and uh, whether he's dead or not, it, it's politics is great. But the point is, is I posed that question to some of our listeners and uh, a lot of them didn't know what it was either. The uh, veal question. And uh, then I spread that out to venison and divining rods. But the point is, is you looking it up on the Internet and then calling us uh, three days later and telling us, you know what it is, is not the game. That's not right. how it works. Right. Right. All right. Go ahead and ask your question to cake, Jonathan. I uh, wanted to know uh, what's what's their influences and uh, which uh, bands they they like growing up. Um, uh, you know, um, I don't think there's uh, a, an easy answer to that, so I'll s save you the time to say that. I guess um, we don't really like bands um, so much as we like songs by bands, and usually there's, you know, each band there's maybe three or four songs that we just really love and you know uh appreciate and, and learn from and uh but um you know they're probably a lot of the same uh bands of you know that that you like um uh, that's not a very good answer but there's just a lot of different kinds of music that we listen to but nobody growing up i mean i know what you're saying i'm kind of that way too it's like you like three songs from a lot of different bands but then there are guys like uh you know elvis costello where i like a i would say a body of their work like i, I could uh 
I, w- I, w- I would probably say that I, I enjoy a lot of his, a uh, uh-huh. lot, lo- lot of Elvis Costello, for instance, or uh, yeah. John Hyde or someone like that. There's people that where the number is creeps up uh, above three, definitely. Right. Well, yeah. who would those be? Uh, well, you know, um, uh, well, you know, um, I like um, Led Zeppelin and um, I like... Um, you know Elvis Costello and uh, James Brown and um, Benny Goodman. Um, if you want to go way back, that was just uh, a badass. Uh, was just uh, was you know provided some of the really the sort of the rock equivalent to the music of his day. Right, um, amazing uh, uh, arrangements. Um, Hank Williams Sr. has been a big influence for me. Um, just uh, as a songwriter, writing really simply. Um, uh, and and saying what he's going to say, and then getting the hell out. Right. Um, so. And Vince, uh, who do you got? Uh, my Chuck like, Mangione. Yeah, I I did <laughs> Herb like Alpert, that. I, guys like that. Sure. I Doc mean, that was, I was a very influential age when uh, the Feel So Good thing was on the radio. <laughs> yeah. I was in seventh grade. You did, know, did you pick up the trumpet, trumpet because of that? No, I was already playing it, and I thought, well, that's cool. Someone's got a trumpet hit on the radio, so right. Yeah, you know, I gravitated towards it. You know, he's Italian too, so I right. he's right into that. And I think he played the flugelhorn. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't want to burst your bubble, but I remember the the picture of him on the front of the the cover there. He right. didn't have a trumpet; he had a flugel. No, horn. he had a flugel. Vince horn. can play flugel. Yeah, they're you know they're both same in B flat, same yeah, thing. Same yeah, it's just just different tone. But uh, no, I wasn't attacked, buddy. I'm just saying. no, no. That's he's, okay. I'm he's okay Italian. With that. He gets really defensive. <laughs> you know, I have my uh, countrymen have a long history of being attacked by um, Greeks and um, right. You know what, uh, Moors and yeah. you know just the whole gamut. Okay, so you'd say Chuck Mangione. So Chuck Mangione, pretty much. Final answer. That's what it spoils down. Le- Lisa. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me do something. Let me have some fun here. Jonathan. Yo. Chuck Mangione. <laughs> You're 15. No, no. Benny Goodman. Huh? Nope. No. Hank okay. Williams Sr.? Nope. Huh? All right. Go go, go dig around. <laughs> Lisa? Yeah? You're 18. What's up? Um, I have a boyfriend, and we've been dating for about six months now, and he's become really, really, really possessive. He wants to see me every single day, and if he can't see me every day, he gets really angry. Not to the point of abusive angry, just like really irritated angry and gets really quiet and won't talk to me. Pouty. Yeah. Pouty, huh? How old, how old is he? He's 20. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It's a little old for that kind of behavior, isn't it? Uh, I, I, could, I could do pouty at 20. Yeah, you did it. You did it all the way to twenty two, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I could do it for a long. I could still probably pull it off if I had oh. to. So, uh, Lisa, is it, he's, do you want to break up with him? I don't want to break up with him. Whenever we're together, I enjoy the time we spend together. I just wish that he would like realize that I have a life too. I mean, I can't even do my laundry without him it's being. It's sort there. of one of these situations where she needs to save him from himself. Right? Do you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because he. His, his, yeah, this is what guys do. It's like their biggest fear is their relationship ending, yet they're going to see to it that the relationship ends sooner than it, it would have if they just sat the F still and not 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 come at you pawing and uh, moaning. It sounds like an unequal um, distribution of enthusiasm for the relationship. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I had that myself, yeah. It's rough. It's right. always me try, like going over to his house, making an effort to see him, and he doesn't make hardly any effort to see me. Oh, well, now wait a second. That's, that, a, that's a that, twist. That's different. So he complains when he doesn't see you every day, but yet it's always you who are going over to his house. I'm. The, he's like, come over, come over. You know, he's he's that type. Does he? You know, do you live at home? I live. No, I don't live at my parents' house. I just moved out like the first of April. Right, and uh, he... I, I'm confused. Yeah, I am, too. Wh- wh- yeah, why does he want you to come to his place? I don't know. Why doesn't he come Why doesn't he come to yours? Well, I have a roommate, and yeah. Yeah, so. what's he do for a living? He works at a, a department store as a returns clerk. Oh, that's going to mm. be the world's worst job. That's the problem mm. right there. Yeah. Customer service. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and you're uh, doing what? You going to school? You working? I'm going to school and working. I'm working full time. The only way I can kind of put this together is: Does he want to have sex every time you come over? No, no. Hmm. We've agreed that we don't want to do that till we're married. Wow. 
dating so, one of the smart couples. <laughs> well, but he's still uh, he's still pouty, huh? He must be. Yes. They're, they're fooling around, you know. What are you doing? Mm, not much. Really? Just uh, second base type activity? Kissing, touching. Wow. Hmm. And this has been going on for how long? <sighs> That's been going on for like two months, but we've been seeing each other about six. How old is he again? He's 20. 20. Hmm. Is there a favorite television show involved? No. <laughs> yeah. All right. We I'm work not... on cars together and stuff like that. Oh, you work on cars? Yes, cool. I work on cars with him. Wow. That's a... Uh... That's an exciting life you guys have forged for yourself. <laughs> no sex, but uh, you get to uh, help him lean out a carb. That's great. Hey, uh, Lisa? Yeah? I, I don't know. This doesn't sound like a real problem. I, I would just say stand your ground, and if you don't want to go over there and you want him to come over and you went over the last five times, then tell him to come over to your house. And if okay. he says no, then you're not going to his house. Right. Okay. Save him from himself. Right. What about, like... Nah, that's enough. Yeah. They're not even having sex, for Christ's sake. They're working on cars together. Mm. That's a car, working on cars is a good way to sublimate your sexuality. <laughs> that's right. Mm. Here, here. Uh, Alejandra? Hi, it's nice to meet you. I love you guys. <laughs> I don't have any of your CDs yet, though. <laughs> but I've been, I've been listening to you since I was, like, um, like four years. I know it's, <laughs> like, four years ago. I, I heard you on K-Rock um, at night. But, um, anyway, I was That was the last time they played us, I think, actually. <laughs> oh, oh, no, okay. no. Okay, and, um, okay, and what happened? Uh, and I'm so mad. <laughs> okay, um, well, I'm reading this book. Um, uh, I've been reading it. Well, I finished it already. But it's called uh, Brave New World, and uh, it was just about music and... And I, I think that you guys are so great because every you're political and you're getting that through, you know, and to people because usually not that love is bad, but it's usually always about love. But I, I was just wondering if you're going to make a, a remake of if you're making more if, uh, in the future, are you going to make more remakes of the old songs like like Don Shane maybe? <laughs> like what song? Don, Don Shane. Shane. No, I'm just kidding about that one. I so. can't believe that you know that song. Oh, Don Shane. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, my German teacher says that they say it wrong, but no, no, that song isn't really that. <laughs> I the, like it, but it's like who sing? Does Doris Day sing? Uh, no, sing? no, 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 no. The Andrew sisters. The Andrew sisters. Yeah. yeah. The, no, no. I'm sorry. It's wrong. Um, no. Well, it's the man. Old. Wayne Newton sings. Wait, uh -huh. Oh, don't Wayne Newton. There Wayne we go. Newton. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. 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 How the hell do you know that? How do I know that? Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, the, you you're busted. The, the, I'll tell you the thing. Hold on. Quiet down there, Alejandro. <laughs> It's that weird Tourette's brand you've got. Well, I'll tell you why. The the thing that's um, sad about uh, he, I'm I'm pretty sure it's Wayne Newton singing Stanka Shane. It sounds like a chick is singing it. <laughs> it does. It's and, scary. And the reason it's stuck in my mind is it's it's very surprising when you find out a guy yeah. is yeah. singing it because it it really it really sounds like Dinah Shore singing it. And it turns out it's a dude with a mustache, <laughs> albeit a penciled-in one. Well, I don't we, think we, he had one back then. Just a real but, choir boy voice. But still, yeah, it yeah. freaks you out when you're... When, I, and were you like seven years old when you saw his picture after hearing the voice? Yeah. And it just totally floored you? Same thing happened to me. Same thing happened to me when I, when I saw Mick Jagger on, sing on television. And I, I thought, you know, it sounded like this guy has a big beard. Right, and he, he didn't have a beard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was traumatized <laughs> yeah. by that non-bearded thing. Yeah. <laughs> Conversely, I'd he heard some radio interviews with Dan Haggerty long before I'd seen him in the Grizzly <laughs> Adams series, and when he did have the beard, I was floored. Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting how it could work both ways. All right, where? Uh, what did Alejandra want? She wants us to do, or she's asking if we want to um, cover some songs? do some old cover songs, which we've done in the past uh, uh, sparingly. Um, uh, just to sort of, uh, just because we felt like it and because we weren't supposed to do it. Right. But then it started being like, um, uh, oh, the cake uh, is supposed to do this. So we stopped doing it. And just, um, so we'll do it, uh, but probably when no one is expecting it. I would like to uh, suggest uh, Hocus Pocus by Focus. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a musical yeah. song. There's a little yodeling. Uh -huh. I think uh, something would be good with the trumpet and you uh, and the and I'll, uh, I'm going to talk to you guys during the break about yeah, that, though. That sounds good. And we could probably clear it, no problem. <laughs> Brian? Yeah. You're 14? Yeah. What's up? I'd like to know the adverse effects of hot sauce on the human body. I'm not aware of any. It's hurtful. <laughs> You're fine. Reflux. Yeah, I'm not aware of any. You all right there, Brian? If you have a whole bunch, don't you, don't you uh, have a hard time containing... Uh, 
I mean, if you have too much of anything, I, I suppose it's bad. Too much hot oh, sauce. I, I mean, you're going to get diarrhea, I would yeah. think, and that kind of thing. But yeah, or how, how about, you... uh, yeah, like bladder infections or yeast infections for the... Water. No. No? I don't know of any specific adverse effect of the, of the hot sauce. What are you doing so. with all this hot sauce? Yeah, it depends. Putting it in your eyes? No, no, on the food, but I a see. lot of it. Yeah, well, a lot of guys just like that. It's fine. If you don't have any problems with it, it's fine. Well, I'm, I'm noticing some, uh, some side effects. What? Um, uh, we get diarrhea. That's uh, what I said. Hemorrhoids. Well, you don't get hemorrhoids. Hem- you get hemorrhoids from diarrhea. That's what causes hemorrhoids, and it's going to burn like hell coming out the way it burns going in. Yeah. Right, well, maybe oh, you, you should uh, take it a little easy on the hot sauce. Yeah, uh, I need to do that. Yeah. Hey, uh, Brian, <laughs> you're, uh, you're 14. Can you play a video game and uh, have a crush on some chick at school that doesn't like you? Do you have to sit there and mope about hot sauce? What's wrong with you? Are you depressed? No. Okay. I get it. Hold so this, on is a, a this is a buffalo wings thing. I thought someone was having, you know, these sensual times with, like, hot chocolate sauce on no. skin or All something right. like that. Right, Brian. Right. Come That's on. totally off. What are you? Are you in the eighth grade? Ninth grade. What? Would you shut up, Drew? What grade are you in? Eighth grade. Yeah. Drew, shut up. Thank you, Brian. All right. Cheer up, would you, buddy? All right. It's, it's not uh, the end of the world, really. God, it's so sad to hear these. Uh, I mean, we talk to so many, like, 14, 15-year-olds. just like... Uh, it's rough. Uh, just hard. imagine, just imagine, Adam, if it had been your eye calling it at 15. No, I, no, I wasn't that depressed. I, really? I, w- I wouldn't have acted depressed if I was on the radio. All right, 20, a 20. I still wouldn't have acted depressed. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? You, know you what, wouldn't though, have been yeah. able to tell. Maybe he's just acting really serious. You know, he's trying to act like an adult, and an adult's act depressed. Well, maybe that's it. <laughs> or not even that, but cool people act depressed. Yeah, that's right. I think that's a very dangerous message we send as a society, that uh, you can only be cool if you're depressed, or you at least have to sound depressed in order to pull pull off cool. And furthermore, those guys get, a, get laid a lot more than upbeat, talkative guys. That's mm-hmm. because... Uh, because uh, women, in order to um, give themselves license to feel a wide range of emotions, need uh, uh, an anchor of non-emotion. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. Mika? Uh, Mika? Oh. Mika. Wow. Mika. Mika, you're 19. Yeah. Didn't know that. <laughs> no. I th- they're, this, they, they're the abusive ones, right? They no, belong in those abusive camps somewhere, uh, enjoying time with other abusive males who are trying to enjoy life but are in a cycle of abuse. Let's talk to Mika. Mike, Mika, <laughs> you're 19. What's up? I'm calling about GHB. I heard, um, I heard you mention it earlier. How you were surprised that it, it, of it to be addictive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen. I've treated a number of cases of GHB addiction now. It's Severe. It really is a mess. It's it's extremely extremely addictive. But um, I had a question about GHB. Like, um, I'm extremely bipolar. Um, it it gets to the point where the only time I sleep is when I sleep of exhaustion after an extreme, extreme uh, manic episode. Um, I don't, I can't go to sleep normally. And I've, I've been treating myself um, as a bipolar with GHB. Like, it's the only thing that can help me. Well, what do you mean? You've been treating yourself? Yeah, it, it just, it's sedating myself. Well, what do you mean you can't go to bed normally? I mean, would you stay up for days on end? Um... Days would be kind of exaggerating it, but I, I could go hours. Weeks, I could go weeks with only like ten hours of sleep. That seems like it would be days on end, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. but it's not. It's not pure days without sleep. Like I take little naps sometimes, but they don't last very long. But I, I just. I, I, I wanted to discuss that. Was there anything I should be worried about with GAP? Yes, GAP will make bipolarity worse. Absolutely, I've seen a lot of that. So the thing to do, really, probably, is go to a doctor, right, Drew? Yeah, th- yeah. this is you're obviously not being treated, right? I, I've been to many doctors. Yeah, well, but I don't know you, what they're doing. Hmm, okay, that might be true, actually. <laughs> H- how long have you stayed with one person? Um, I don't know, like two or three months, the longest. And what happens during that period of treatment? Oh, um. They can't handle me. I, I went to one doctor who said, you need to go to someone else because I just can't. I, I'm not able to deal with this. And All right. Because you're, that's not because you're bipolar. That's a personality problem, right? 
Uh, no, yeah. it's, it's the fact that they didn't. I, I, it wasn't personality. We, we actually got along really well. They just didn't understand what was going on. And so they referred you to someone else. That's a, that's a sensible and realistic thing to do. Yeah. But why didn't you go? I did. And <laughs> so what did that person do? All right, do they know you're using GHB? No. <laughs> okay, they'd be impossible to treat you. If you're doing anything besides the medication they're using, impossible to treat bipolarity. Impossible. So no wonder they were confused. They didn't have the facts. The the one did know. The the one. Did all right, all right. Look, what? Stop wasting our time. What do you want? Um, just pain in the ass. <laughs> I just no. basically tell you what everyone else is dying to say, but never says it when you're bugging them like you do. What, now, what do you want from us? What do I need to worry about with this drug? It's profoundly addictive. It causes mood instability. Even in those people who are not bipolar, it creates a bipolar hypomanic type state. And it can change your memory. And I've seen some personality changes, and it takes quite some time for them to get better. In fact, it, this has been a really hard condition to treat. Every, I'd say almost every single one I've treated has gone back, and I've never seen them actually clear in terms of their, their affect instability and the personality changes we've well, seen. Well, maybe that's your fault, Drew. Yeah, it must be. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Hey, Mika, mm -hmm. go uh, talk to an expert. All right. All right. All right. Good time. Stop treating yourself. She's what a pain in the ass she was. I think we got to take a break here, Drew. All right. Drew, am I right? Was she a pain yeah. in the ass? Well, that's why I was trying to lead her down that path that it really is a personality issue. They were telling her they couldn't handle her because she wouldn't cooperate. Yeah. Well, it's funny. So people always call the show and they, they, they have a question and then they just want to argue the answer. Well, the other thing is she's not normal. You know, she has, yeah. she has a condition, so you can't expect her to be exactly perfect. So I know, you know. You're right. You're right. But I, I believe that it would be condescending to treat them in any other way that was... I don't want to, I don't want to figure out who's sane and who's not sane and treat them differently. I treat uh, the mental patients the same as I treat the uh, geniuses. Right, Drew? You kick everyone's ass. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a little break. Cake is uh, our guest tonight. Drew, put uh, Tim on hold when I we come back. I can't. Oh, I'll do it. When we come Thank back, you. we'll speak to 21-year-old uh, Tim who, uh, let's see, what did he say? Uh, did he have any part in his girlfriend's development of vaginal tumors? <sighs> Drew, you sure you want to talk about vaginal tumors? I think he means cervical cancer. All right, after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Parola. That is Dr. Drew. Vince and John are both here from Cake. I think we should uh, hear something else from Cake, but we'll talk to uh, Tim first. Drew's in uh, North Carolina tonight. Tim? Yes. You're 21? Yes, sir. So what'd you do to your girlfriend? <laughs> All right. We've been going out for about five years. Mm-hmm. For the first few years, we had constant sex every day. Uh-huh. Started complaining of stomach problems. Right. Uh, she just got checked out a few months ago, and she has cysts in her vagina. And no, not in her vagina. She has them in her ovaries. Ovaries. Oh, oh who cares? That, that's in her vagina. Va it's in her vagina, it's though. It's just, just down there. And she's, she's in real pain. And next month, she's going for surgery. And in the last few months, she's come with a skin disease, too. And What's that? They're calling it the love disease. Um, it's all over her elbows or fingers or knees and it's just spreading all over the place and well, why don't you tell me what it is uh, that psoriasis yes. carpet burn That's she has psoriasis yes and I've, who told you that was the love disease um her doctor that's the love disease is psoriasis maybe they were making jokes or whatnot you sure they didn't say the heartbreak disease uh, that could be too. Um, okay, maybe that was not it. positive. Okay. Yeah, it's, love, the, it's heartbreak. the heartbreak of psoriasis. That's right. Yeah, why is that? Was that just from that uh, shampoo commercial from the seventies? Yep. yep. You guys call it the heartbreak from that that Tegrin commercial. Yep. The heartbreak of psoriasis. That's a good song title, actually. The you that you got to write down. Yeah. The heartbreak of psoriasis. <laughs> I, I know of no association though between ovarian cysts and psoriasis. However, so it. Uh, it's one of them things. She's hey. got ovarian cysts and she's got psoriasis. Hey, uh, hey, Tim. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna make a guess though. Junior college. No. Pre med. No. No. <laughs> no. Sir. No. No. 
Oh, my God. I do concrete work. Shocking. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> All right, I'm not a dumb redneck. What do you do? You do but you, you do, are concrete. You do, fini- oh. you do finishing work? Uh, I do a little bit of everything. All right. <laughs> uh, what do you do mainly? You do like commercial or residential stuff? Residential. You doing like driveways? Driveways, sidewalks. Yeah. What not? That's a good what, lie. What city are you calling from? Cincinnati. Okay. You got your own bull float? No. Oh boy! Come on, buddy. I work for my buddy. All right. Is he a pumper? <laughs> no, he's a hippie. Oh, I, I meant like cement pumper. I didn't mean. <gasps> All right, there, buddy. All right, so uh, the deal is, am I causing this? or No, no, this is just her. She's got her okay. eyes. She called it the love disease. <laughs> 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 well, I can understand how that would go down in your head if he said the heartbreak of psoriasis. <laughs> He, but Tim, Tim's hypothesis is that he's slowly killing his girlfriend with his penis. That's his deal. Most, most men feel that way, really. <laughs> yeah. Killing me softly with his schlong. <laughs> <laughs> Amy? Amy, do you know the heartbreak of psoriasis? Oh, um, no, I don't. Mm. What's up there, baby? <laughs> What's up with me? Um... Well, uh, first of all, I've listened to your show since high school, so that's cool. Thank Thanks. You. Um, basically, um, I'm big. I'm a 21 year old virgin, <laughs> for one thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna. I'm planning to stay that way until marriage. And uh, you're fat. True, please. Oh no, I'm not. I promise. Oh. Um, no, you'd probably like me very much. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh dear. Um. Yeah. So. I've had a boyfriend um, mm-hmm. for about two months, and uh, he has been sexually active. And um, yeah, anyways, he, him, and I are not sleeping together, but um, we do other things. And he wants to bring me to orgasm, but um, and I want to go too. Um, but I, I can't. Like we get there, and he's very good at what he does, and mm-hmm. um, and I had, you know, what's he doing? Um, oral, oral sex. Oral sex. And, right. Yeah. And I get very, very close. And then I just, like, kind of freak out on him. Like, I yeah. move or I, I don't know. And it's, like, frustrating. That, that, is that, that is that maneuver that only women can do. Yeah. yeah. Right, Adam? Yeah. Yeah. They're, oh, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Yeah, it's like you're, you're right there, but you got to stop. Yeah. Yeah, guys I, hate that. Exactly. Yeah, he doesn't like that. I don't Sometimes like- we try to keep going, but then you get serious. And then, he, and then there's a weird beat there, of, like silence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so That's I mean, so I've never had one, and we've gotten really close. And All right. He, well, how about on your own? See, I've never done that. Well, why are you against that too? Or well, it just seems to me like. It's kind of like tickling, like someone else tickles you and that's good, but I don't see how tickling myself would work. Mm, yeah, that's works. interesting. No, no. Mm. Are you a religious person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, you should tickle yourself. No. <laughs> so is that, would that be against your, your teachings? Um, not, t- no, I don't think so. Well, then why not tickle yourself? Cause because it doesn't, I don't, uh. <laughs> Well, you don't like the idea of it, right? Yeah. But, uh, like if I like the idea of being with him, but if I don't like the idea of touching myself, how is that going to feel good? As you remember, Adam, the women, women have trouble sometimes sort of finding that spot without another person participating with them. And I don't mean spot mechanically. I mean that sort of spot in which their limbic system is engaged where the sexual functioning goes forward. Right. And well, it needs an intimate experience in order for that to happen for some women. Well, and, how about uh, how about if you uh, relax yourself with a couple of uh, wine coolers or something? Do you drink? And maybe some assistive devices for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She should savor her uh, orgasmic virginity. It sounds well, like that, she's enjoying it. She's enjoying the suspense. Yeah, how about how about having a glass of red wine, relaxing, uh, putting on a little uh, soft music and seeing if you can uh, get out of your head a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, but I don't... Yeah, well, what do you want us to say? I know. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I really think you got to learn to tickle yourself a little bit. <laughs> you could do that. But what's Assist- the hurry, right? Assistance from mechanics. Yeah. Can he use a vibrator on you, or is that... Is that illegal, too? I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't... I'm, okay. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? It, it's it, it just... It just it strikes me that uh, religion is like the governing body of like uh, 
kart racing or NASCAR or something where they lay down some rules like the engine can only be this this big, this much displacement, and the aerodynamics are such and such, and it's got to run on you know such and such a fuel, and then you just work on ways to beat it. Mm. Like, all right, those are the rules. But I still want to win the race, so what am I... Now, let's see about cheating those rules without technically cheating the rules. And this is what goes on with religion. It's like, she's religious, she wants to save her virginity, but her boyfriend's going down on her. Right. And she's she's okay with that. Sounds like she's having fun pursuing her personal liberties. Yeah. All right. But, you know, Vince brings up a good point, which is, uh, why don't you save the orgasm, too? I mean, if you're going to save the virginity... For marriage, why don't you uh, grab the orgasm and throw that in with the virginity? Yeah, be 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 a be a real virgin, you know. Yeah, well, it's a good I, point. yeah, I don't know if she's really saving it on principle. I think that it's just something that she's looking forward to, and she's enjoying the suspense of it not happening yet. No, I think it's I think it's religious principle. Really? She's conflicted. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she's conflicted. All right, well, why don't we uh, why don't we hear ourselves a uh, cake song? Does that uh, sound good to you guys? Yeah. Sure. All right, let's hear a uh, short skirt, long jacket. That is cake. Our beloved cake, everybody. True is in uh, North Carolina. We're out here in uh, L.A. John and Vince are both here from cake. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love line. We're back. Back with uh, Cake. We have uh, John and Vincent here from the band. Drew is in North Carolina. Jimmy is 23. Jimmy. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, I uh, just want to tell you, you know, I'm, I'm from Kirkland Air Force Base over here. I'm 377 Security Forces Squadron. Hoorah! Get some shouts out to the boys. Anyhow. Motivate. My boss, my yeah. boss <laughs> Sergeant Aldridge. What's that? Sergeant Aldridge. My boss. Sergeant yeah. Aldridge, yeah. tech sergeant, I'm born in his wife. Yeah. Oh, right, right. <laughs> All right. No, uh, please. All right, buddy. Listen, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> How much more overtly bogus can a call be? Yeah, I, have, I don't uh, care. Do they have instructions yeah. for that in the joy of cooking? Yeah, exactly. Dave? Was that yeah. yeah. I don't know what that meant. Well, that, that's deboning. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's boning. It's bone in. Dave, you're 22. Uh-huh. What's up? Well, uh, it's pretty cryptic, this Vince, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> no, I, I have no idea what you're doing. You, you, you don't care. Go, go uh, ahead, Dave. All right. I, I saw an ad in the back of a newspaper for, like, earn $600 a month as an anonymous sperm donor. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, it's all about making money for work I'm already doing. So right. I, uh, I went and I tried out, and to be honest, when I... When I had done my deed, I was like, I, you know, I hope that'll do. And uh, so they sent me an email back, and they were like, um, you know, you're he- perfectly fertile and healthy and everything, but not enough of your sperm cells survive the freezing process. And uh, I saw an ad for a product. Now, does that, mean, does that mean you need a larger volume, or is, does that mean no matter what, the cells themselves are sensitive to this, and they won't survive no matter how big a volume you give them? See, I, 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 I honestly don't know, but what they Why said... Why don't you ask them? I'll, I'll do that. Okay. But, uh, uh, I, but uh, I saw this ad for, uh, like, a product that increases your amount of ejaculate, and I know that uh, Adam was talking the other day. He did, like, a, looked into, like, a pills to increase your penis size the other day. And right. I don't, I don't know. If, Adam, if you heard about, uh, like, I saw a product, Biogen 14. It said increase your... Please. Um, by like 400%. Please. There is? Please. Well, no yeah. way. You've not tried it? No way. Here's what you need to do. Stop masturbating so goddamn much. <laughs> yeah. How about giving it a break? <laughs> Take a couple of days off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See yeah. if you can make it a week. You'll be fine then. Really? A week? You'll be fine. You know what I don't, you know what I don't like about the week wait? I mean, hypothetically, because I've never done it. But I'm basically, I'm calling three days for me a week for everyone else. <laughs> is uh, It starts coming out, and you don't even notice it. They, I, I don't even feel, if, if I store up too much, I don't even get the sensation until about uh, the second teaspoon. <laughs> it's like, what, I, what's this wetness I feel on my forehead? And then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm having an orgasm. I, I don't like that. That's no good, Drew. 
Good times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, hey, Drew. Aren't yeah, brah. Yeah, bro. <laughs> bro. Drew, aren't sperm counts just generally down all over the world in the last 50 years or so? I don't know that. I read an article about it. So they're they're thinking that it might be because of ind- endocrine dis- disruptors. Interesting. Yeah. If you um, if also Dr. Drew, mm-hmm. if you don't um, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have an orgasm, let's say you know you store it up for a week and and your sperms they didn't uh, they weren't hanging out with the right temperature, so they died, and so you have all these dead sperm in your testicles. Do you have to wait till you ejaculate to get rid of those dead sperm, or do they get absorbed back in your body and and uh, some get away absorbed. somehow? Some get absorbed. The stuff that's that's in your testicles doesn't stay there very long. It actually hangs out in your seminal vesicles where it's all, it's, prost- it's, it's combined with secretion from the prostate and stored in the seminal vesicles back, actually near your rectum. Speak for yourself. So, so stuff doesn't stay in the testes. Ah, okay. And then, and then it goes through the rectum if, if they die, they're, they're not going to go through the seminal vesicles. They just vesicles. get absorbed. They just get absorbed. I, uh, I stored this guy's sperm in my rectum for a while. <laughs> But it, um, my my rectum's like a, a pawn shop, which is I'll keep it for a while. But if you don't come back to claim it, uh, I'm going to sell it, and uh, you're not going to get any deposit back or anything. Evo, yes, no refund either. No, nope, nothing. Uh, greetings, gang. I'm sorry if I don't have any uh, sexual idiosyncrasies to report this evening. That's all right, there, Evo. You're 24. Your question was uh, about the creative process for cake. Yeah, I wanted to ask you guys, you know, I'm a fellow musician too, and I seem to notice there, you know, something about your lyrical content on some songs. Sometimes they have like a historical content, like uh, your Symphony in C or the one about a bombing Korea every night. And I just wanted to know because I was sometimes like to get into the creative process of other people. And do you sometimes come up with catchy choruses and build like a verse around it or do you do it like vice versa huh this, guy, this guy's got a crossover between like James Cagney and uh and a Hesher Hesher yeah. voice where are you from Evo where am I from well I'm living here in LA right now does that answer your question no that had uh did not answer Nothing my question, question to yeah. where are you living right now oh. would have been the answer to that where are you from well uh, I don't know it's a hard question to answer alright you jackass I'm so tired of everybody. <laughs> Where are you from? Well, I'm currently living in L.A., if that answers your question. No, that doesn't. Where are you from? Well, that's a hard question to answer. Really? Would, would Nicaragua or Philadelphia be such a hard answer? Do you know what I mean? Well, you yeah. might be running from the law or something like that. You can still say where you're from, can't you? No, not if you're really running from the law. I, I'm... Uh, he had a, he had a unique sound to him and a mm. interesting name to boot. And I was curious if he was. Uh, it was, it was like Bob Marley meets James Cagney. Uh, no, I was getting. I was getting. Well, uh, I don't know. Is it was like a Latino I think thing? He's from the Philippines. Well, what, you, you what's hung your nationality? No, no, I didn't. Know. He's back. What's your nationality? Yeah, if that answers anything. What's, what's that? your nationality? Yugoslavian. Okay, right. there you go. That's okay. cool. There you go. Now it's all come. It's all come together. Now we're hanging. <laughs> so uh, to answer your question, because I this, he's really pissed off at you for some reason. But I'll, I'll just sneak this in. Um, that, uh, you know, you just kind of have to uh, uh, carry a pad and paper around with you everywhere you go. And, um, you know, if you're thinking about history, then you, you might write something down uh, about history. If you're thinking about, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, gender relationships, uh, you, would, you would write about that. But uh, I just think you really have to be um, right about what you, what you care about at the moment. And uh, and then it sounds more sincere. For instance, tonight we came up with some themes, right? Yeah. One of them in particular. Which one was it? About an hour ago, there was a, oh, uh, yeah. was a phrase. So, something about uh, love, uh, sor- sor- psoriasis. Oh, psoriasis. Yeah, the heartbreak of psoriasis. Yeah, yeah that could be a that could be a cake song. <laughs> <laughs> it might even be. It might be a good title for an album. Cake, the heartbreak of psoriasis. Right. I don't want to make fun of people who have a no. We're health saying problem. it's heartbreak. It's, there's there's heart there's heartbreak. No, but involved we're being we're being coyly ironic. So it's maybe it's maybe it's not nice. Coprophagia. Right. <laughs> That's that a good down. one. That's, right that I don't, I'm afraid I don't know how to spell that one, sir. Drew. Yep. How do you spell that? Which psoriasis? No, no the, corporal phagia. Corporal phagia. C o r p r o p h a g g i a. No, p h 
You think one of our stoner listeners is going to send you some email correcting you? Corprophagia, P H A G I A. All right, there you go. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. All right, that's it, everybody. Yahoo. Yeah. Comfort Eagle is the name of the uh, cake CD you guys should all go out and get if you don't uh, currently have it. I want to thank John and Vincent for coming in here. Always uh, a good time to see these guys. And, uh, would, it's been uh, too long. Yeah, way too long. Yeah, come thanks back for uh, having us. Come back anytime. Thanks. Thanks, thank, thanks for having us. Drew, you come back tomorrow night? Manana. All right, so we'll see you then. Hey, Drew, call me on my cell phone. No. Come on, buddy. Dude. Come on, buddy. i got to drive an hour and a half back to the hotel. I've got to get up at 6 a.m. for the Good Morning America. It's and 3 here. You're going to be sleeping in the car? Yes. We can't talk, buddy? All right. All right, now go to okay. sleep. Go to, no, 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 forget no, no. it. No, 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 no. I'm calling. no, no I'm forget calling. it, forget it. All right, so until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Corprophagia, C-O-R-P-R-O-P-H-A-G-I-A. Your time is up. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Engel. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.